Hey YouTube, this is Taylor Moss from Everything Under the Sun, and I'm going to show you guys a simple tutorial on how to do some reference modeling in Blender. Uh, so reference modeling means you're modeling from reference, obviously. So what we'll need to do is pull up Google here, and we'll need to find a picture. Uh, I'll just pull up a knife. Um, let's go to images. Let's try and find a good knife. Uh, what you're trying to find is something that's flat. Uh, you don't really want something like this at a weird angle or this. You're trying to find something flat. Uh, this uh, new bear grizzles knife will work fine. So if we um, click that, oh, where is that? Okay. So if we uh, save this image, uh, we can save it as a bear grizzles knife to our desktop and uh, close this. So we'll pop open Blender here and uh, the first thing you have to do is press 5 on your numpad which changes you to an orthographic view so if you press 7, 1, 3, or 9 or just 7, 1, or 3 it'll change your view uh, completely perpendicular to the plane you're looking at. So what you want to do is uh, throw that down and then you need to add your picture. So just click on view and then go to properties and uh, background images. Drop that down. Add an image. Uh, drop down that arrow, click open, desktop, bear girl's knife. So there's your knife. Uh, in your scene, if you go 3D, it does not work, so that's why you have to be in this ortho or perspective, completely parallel view. Alright, so the first thing you're going to want to do is you need to start somewhere. This is actually a great starting point where the cursor is, so if you press add, uh, just add a cube. Uh, so what you're going to want to do is you'll want to rotate it uh, to be kind of the right size. Uh, uh, it's, uh, you can press um, S to scale, um, you can press SX to scale in certain ways, or SY to scale in certain ways, or SZ, um, depending on what you're trying to do. So, um, for the purposes of this, I think uh, what I'll have to do is you press tab and that'll take you into edit mode. Um, so, and when you're in edit mode, uh, you're also going to want to press Z. That removes all transparency, so that means when you s click a vertex, it actually is selecting both vertexes rather than just one of them. So, uh, back in this view, uh, you can press the G key, and it will let you move these axes. Um, a lets you select and everything, or unselect everything, and C is the circle selector. So, most of the time what you end up doing is clicking, pressing A to get let go, pressing C, clicking that, and then pressing G to click on this. Uh, and then you keep going. Uh, what did I do? Alright. Uh, so then again, C, G, that. Um, and so basically, we're, we kind of have a basic uh, sh outline of this right here. So what we need to do is actually, we need to pull this up a little bit. So let's go G and pull this up over here and pull this down over here. Okay. So now what we need to do, oh, you can press shift and hold your mouse wheel to pan around like this and then zoom in. Okay. So now that we have this one piece done, uh, if you press C, you can select uh, both of those. Um, and if you press E, it'll extrude. So then you're basically adding more. And then you'll go over here and you'll click uh, this one and you'll click G. And then you'll select this one again and you'll extrude some more. And then you'll G. Remember, A is to deselect everything. So that's really useful. Uh, so basically, you just do this uh, over and over again. Um, it's a little time consuming, but it looks great when it's done. Alright, so now we have our whole thing covered. So now if you go into 3D space, you can actually see that it looks like that. Um, but there's a problem, and that's our blade is uh, a lot bigger than we would like it to be. 
Um, so what we don't need to do is go to one of your views. Uh, this one's a little harder to do it in, but any of them actually. Um, and I'm just going to use the circle select and scale it up with my mouse wheel and select all the parts that are the blade. Uh, if you're ever confused, and when you have it selected, you can go to here. And there we go. So these are also part of the blade. So uh, we need to get those as well in there. Alright, so now that we have all of these selected, if we press S and then Z, we'll scale in just the Z axis which is pretty nice so now if we uh, unselect and untab you can see we have a rough knife shape um, from here you can do a lot of things if you'd like um, you could go back to here and uh, select uh, these vertices right oh, gotta go into Z mode so we get both axes so we can go into here and uh, what we could do is press W and hit subdivide uh, that actually adds more points here so now what we can do is we can press um, S and then uh, Z again and make this really thin. So now when we're out of the view, you can see that it's thicker up here and tapers to a blade like a normal blade would. As you can see, I did not do it up here. I just don't think I had that selected, which is why that looks kind of different. Um, and it's, if you look in the original image, uh, you can see there's uh, these indentions right here. So you basically would do the same thing. You would select um, with Z select Z on. You would select all the area around it, um, and you would subdivide it. Subdividing it just gives you more points to manipulate. So now that you have those points manipulate or there to be manipulated, uh, if you click them and just move these around, um, and then go back into your 3D view and select those same ones you can drag them down in such a way that you will you might have oh actually i think you'll have to subdivide more than once to get a reference point but that's just a basic tutorial showing you guys how to do stuff with reference modeling um a few tips and commands on how to do that uh this is just a really basic knife but it turned out pretty nice uh hope you guys learned something thanks